So I'm kind of a little bit bummed out because I kept on seeing this thing online about uh, this movie coming out this year. Um, they say October 1st, 2017. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's called Scream, A New Beginning. And, I mean, you know, I was both excited and wary about the idea of this because Wes Craven's gone and it's like without his sort of like fingerprint on the movie, I'm not really convinced at how good it would be. <clears throat> that being said, I'm actually a little bummed because it's, uh, it's apparently a fan film. I mean, I'm still sure as hell going to watch it, but the fact that it actually got an IMDb credit kind of intrigues me a little bit. But it kind of got me thinking about the Scream movies. Those were like really big, like a big influence on me growing up. Um, because the original Scream trilogy, and I do say trilogy because in many ways I feel that that's how it should have been left. Let's just start from the beginning, all right? Um, Scream 1, first of all, defined like the 90s style horror film. Second of all, it had like everything that was sort of good about the 90s, sort of like, you know, the referencing pop culture and the kind of like poking fun at you know, film and shit like that. I mean, Kevin Smith kind of started it with, like, the, the New Jersey Chronicles and stuff. Um, and this movie was, like, a cool, like, examination of, like, a movie within a movie. In this universe, it's like, this is reality, and horror movies do actually exist, and these people are patterning themselves out of, you know, but they're almost sort of, like, aware at the same point that it is a movie, and they're going through all the horror movie tropes, even though they, you know, call them out for being as stupid as they are. You know, it was just like a really clever idea. It had a lot of personality. It was a lot of fun. It had some parts that even like kind of give you a little bit of a chuckle and it has like a really, but it has a darkness to it too. The ending is like bloody violent. And um, in Scream 2, some people, this is, this is where, you know, there's like kind of a dividing line because some people are like, oh, Scream 2 is better. Or, oh, Scream 1 is better. I personally like Scream 1 the best out of all of them. However, I will say that Scream 2 was, like, on the same level. Like, it was a truthfully good movie in the exact same way that the original examined horror movies. Scream 2 examined sequels, and it did so just as well. And it was just as relevant. It had, like, its own reason for existing. I mean, I was kind of bummed about certain characters getting killed off, but somebody had to go. Uh, again, Scream 1 and 2, great movies, they really stood out, each of them in their own way, and they were a great tribute to horror movies. Then you get to Scream 3, and I know that a lot of people don't like that. I know that that's a lot of people's least favorite Scream movie, and for a while, I kind of felt that way too. Scream 3 was written by a different dude, and in certain parts, it really, really, really shows. For those of you who have seen it, whoever smells the gas, that was just like so outlandishly stupid and convenient and just... I mean, even for a movie where you kind of have to suspend disbelief, it was like, all right, dude, like, come on, who the fuck wrote this? Like, this isn't, this is a Scream movie, this isn't Broken Arrow. There was that, and frankly, I mean, again, I, I get the whole, like, spoofing on pop culture kind of a thing, but Jay and Silent Bob having, like, a five-second cameo in this movie was really dumb. Like, it, it had me going, and then you get a scene like that, and you're like, but that being said, I, I'm really picking apart all of the, like, negative things about Scream 3, okay? There was dumb shit like that, and there was the whole idea that, like, you know, a trilogy, like, really? Like, I can understand horror movies, and I can understand sequels, but why a trilogy? It just seems like reaching, you know? But even in a certain video that a certain somebody leaves behind, they establish the rules of the trilogy, and they basically say it's a rarity in the horror field, but it does exist. Okay, you know, and for what a trilogy is, or the whole conceptual, like, idea of a trilogy, Scream 3 actually represented it very, very well. Um, there were a lot of parts of the movie that were really dark, in fact, most of it was quite good. You know, Patrick Dempsey's character was really cool, although I kind of wish he had been the killer. I think he was a more intriguing character. Um, but the whole sort of like bringing it back to the beginning thing, the whole... They examined a trilogy just as well as they did a sequel, just as well as they did a horror movie. And for that, I thought that the first three Scream movies were great, and honestly, that's where they should have fucking left them. Now, Scream 4, I'm not saying it was a bad movie. I just feel that it was maybe unneeded, okay? It was just as culturally relevant, I would say, as the first three were, because it was all about remakes. And around that time, 
every goddamn horror movie that was coming out was a horror remake. And they even say in that movie, that's the only one that they'll green light these days because it's the only, like, sure way to make money. But my argument would be, okay, if you wanted to not ruin the trilogy dynamic and you wanted to keep the whole remake thing going, it should have been an entirely different cast. It should have been an entirely new cast of characters. They could have had, like, a cameo of one of the characters, like, oh, yeah, I knew something like this happened back at Woodsboro or something like that, you know, just to kind of be like, hey, Scream fans, there you go. But, like, it's not really a remake and it doesn't really represent a remake because it's all the same characters again. Also, another thing is that whole thing where, you know, you do another movie, somebody's got to die. Somebody, there needs to be a sacrifice, you know, somebody's got to go. Um, don't get me wrong. Again, I've been following these characters for four films. It's almost like they're my friends. I don't want to see any of them die, but one of them should have fucking died. If you're going to bring them back, one of them should have fucking died. And they didn't. They just ate through the new cast of characters that were just in the periphery. And also, there, there were certain parts of the script that were, like, really, really corny. Um, like, Gail has, like, a really good zinger that she tells another reporter. And then, like, she turns to walk away and she just goes, like, I still got it. It's like... Uh, it was just really, really corny. And, like, the whole idea behind Scream A New Beginning intrigued me because I was like, maybe they are going to do with this one what they should have done with Scream 4 and just have a completely different cast, which, I mean, not for nothing, they probably will, but it's a fan film, you know. Uh, I mean, the fact that it's on IMDb gives me a little bit of hope, but still, it's like, I wouldn't really expect a whole hell of a lot from it.